Well, that's a great question. How does he invest internationally? Because he was, you know, he had really not done much international investing at all. And then when I started working on this book was when he was really starting to expand in that area. And he has what he calls the circle of confidence, which is what you know about, what, you, what you're capable of doing. And he believes that if you don't know more than the next guy, you should not really be trying to invest. Because, and that there's this, this idea that he doesn't invest in technology because he doesn't understand it. That's not true. He, he actually understands technology perfectly well. He just doesn't understand it as well as you guys do. And he's not going to go into the casino and bet against you. And that's pretty smart. So he also, you know, likes things that don't obsolesce. When he's looking internationally, what he's been doing is he's had this, you know, he understands every business thing there is to know about everything in the U.S. He's gradually been expanding that to other countries. He does the same thing that he does in the U.S., which is that he reads extensively. He studies, and he's gradually built up those layers of mental file cabinets so that he started to get more comfortable investing outside the U.S. When I was working with him on this book, he started um, investing in Korea, and that was really fascinating. And I actually wrote about it in the book because, you know, he saw that the Korean economy had been in trouble um, years ago and that it had improved. And he, the improvement took place over some number of years, he read about that in the newspaper. So he was looking for something to do. So he just checked stock valuations in Korea and found that there were stocks trading at PEs of three and two and five, and yet the economy was fine. So he said, well, I think I'll just figure this out. So he got um, one of the brokerage firms to get him this book of Korean stocks. And he went through it just like the old Moody's manuals but he realized that he didn't understand Korean accounting, and he needed to because it's different from the U.S., and he wanted to make sure the numbers, you know, he understood them. So he got another book, and he taught himself Korean accounting principles. And he learned everything there was to know about um, all of these Korean companies, and he called through and he read about thousands of Korean companies and called the list down to about 20. And then he figured out how to set up a brokerage account in Korea, which if you've ever... I mean, you probably have, it's incredibly difficult to do if you are a U.S. citizen. And in fact, you really can't do it. He had to have help. Um, to, I mean, Warren Buffett can do it, but you or I really, you know, it, it's not easy. And he ended up buying a whole bunch of Korean stocks and making a ton of money on them. These were personal investments. And so that's kind of his, you know, and right now, I guarantee you there's something else he's probably looking at. Well, actually, what he's doing right now is all stuff related to the financial crisis, but internationally, it's the same thing. He's just looking at what's out there that nobody else is noticing, reading, and studying. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button and to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.